Hello viewer, we're back in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, this video is taking place after the uh, Minmus mission. I'm not actually even on the same save here, but you may be wondering, what do I do next? Uh, I've been to Minmus, I'm ready to go to the moon, what's the next step? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of examples here that I've uh, done up, uh, not uh, both in the same uh, profile. This, for instance, was a uh, early station design that I came up with in, uh, in one of my save games. It's fairly basic to build, essentially just a, uh, a skipper engine, uh, a bunch of fuel tanks on it, and a hitchhiker canister, a science lab, the three-person capsule. It has no parachute, so it's never intended to go back to the surface. And it's got some additional batteries inside here, some fuel cells to convert the uh, fuel into electricity. And I did kind of uh, screw up on this. Oh, it's also got uh, four docking ports on the hitchhiker canister to dock ships to. The idea being that by the time you get it up into orbit, uh, you can refuel uh, other ships with it. Uh, it has very little fuel on board right now. Uh, if I bring up the resources, it's got... Uh, um, only about maybe an eighth of the uh, the total fuel available on it. So you could bring up another special purpose tanker, which would be nothing but a probe core, a fuel tank, and an engine, and didn't have a capsule, didn't have a, uh, a science lab, uh, some RCS fuel, obviously, so you could dock with it. And uh, I actually made a mistake when I designed this in that I didn't put RCS tanks onto it. So that's what this other little ship is is it's basically a probe core, a couple of adapters, a small engine, and a bunch of RCS tanks. And I brought it up and I was able to dock it on here. So this is essentially my RCS storage uh, for this space station, for lack of a better term. Now, there's no real advantage to getting rid of the engine. Uh, even though I don't plan on moving it out of Kerbin's orbit, it would still be possible to do it. If I wanted to send this to uh, the moon, for instance, all I'd need to do would be to undock this craft, dock it onto the nose, uh, refuel this thing with other uh, uh, tankers taking off from the ground. I, don't know, I could take it to the moon, I could take it to, uh, to Minmus, and I could use it as a uh, refueling station there. Uh, right now I've got... Uh, 885 meters of delta V in spite of having very little fuel in it. So that would be enough to get to the moon, probably not into orbit though. Uh, I would estimate with this craft, if you completely filled it up in orbit, you'd probably get to the moon with about two thirds of the fuel remaining when, once you were in orbit. So this is one of the possibilities. It's a relatively, uh, relatively simple ship to build. Uh, has room for uh, uh, the science lab here. That will generate science uh, if it's in orbit around another body. By simply putting science experiments into it, uh, science data rather, uh, it can generate uh, science and then transmit it back to Kerbin. Or you can actually use that to level up uh, your astronauts. Instead of bringing them all the way back to Kerbin, if they gain enough experience through planting flags and doing orbits and landings and things like that, you can bring them aboard a, uh, a science lab and you can level them up like that. So this is one example. I'm going to show you one other example. And for that, I'll have to uh, quit to the main menu and load up a different profile. And that would be this career here. And we go through the tracking station. And I've got a number of flights here, so it's gonna, uh, you're gonna have to bear with me while I find the correct one. And this is another example of a fairly basic uh, space station, uh, made to be uh, orbital. This one I do actually have an RCS tank on it. I've got a number of uh, fuel tanks here. Once again, it had to be refueled in Kerbin's orbit. I've got uh, normal sized docking ports on it, and I've got the docking port juniors. Uh, I've got
got a science lab on it. I've got solar panels. And then here I've got a, uh, a lander, which is designed for uh, multiple trips down to the surface of the moon. So it essentially is nothing more than a, uh, uh, than a small fuel tank, the little uh, terrier engine, uh, some RCS tanks, uh, a couple of uh, goo canisters, some batteries, and the uh, capsule has a two-person uh, uh, pod. So you can take a, a scientist and a pilot down. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's up with this thing. There seems to be something drawing power because even though it's getting sunlight, it uh, is not allowing it to, uh, to recharge. I noticed this when I loaded it in earlier. I don't know if I've got some kind of a, uh, a mod that's active on this save or uh, I don't think anything is turned on in terms of the uh, uh, the research or anything like that. So yeah, I don't know exactly what the uh, the issue is, but you can see that it's a fairly basic thing, you know, like a, once again a capsule, uh, the hitchhiker canister, which isn't necessarily needed, but it gives you a place to put your docking ports on. In this case, I've got three of them, and uh, when it gets to the moon, it's probably got about uh, two thirds of its uh, delta V again. In this case, I've still got 2,300 delta V, uh, which translates to about half of the uh, the fuel so I guess I probably would have started with about 5,000 uh, so you know figure 1200 to get to the moon and get into orbit and that gives me plenty of refuels for the uh, for the lander I can make multiple trips down to the surface of the moon I can uh, plant flags I can take surface samples I can do all that sort of stuff once again this is never intended to go back to Kerbin uh, the idea being that uh, when you've collected enough science, you uh, bring a small ship with a capsule that can re-enter. You fly that from Kerbin out to here. It doesn't have to have landing gear or any of that kind of stuff. All it needs is a simple one-person capsule. You fly it here. You dock it with the, uh, uh, with the station. Or you could even just uh, do a rendezvous and spacewalk over to the station, collect up all the science, spacewalk back to your craft, and then back to Kerbin and do your re-entry and you get all your science home and that way even if it's science that uh, that doesn't get full value for transmit you s you're still returning it you're still taking the actual data disks or whatever it is uh, that Kerbals use to store their data on tapes or CDs or who knows what uh, but uh, that's another option that you can do and when I'd finished off the, uh, the Minmus landing and my uh, series of uh, sort of beginner stuff for uh, Kerbal Space Program, I had over 1,400 uh, science points available to unlock stuff on the uh, tech tree. This would not take any more than about 300 more uh, for unlocking to be able to, to launch one of these and do heavy launches and, and that sort of stuff. So. That's just a couple of ideas on uh, what you can do once you've done your initial landings. Uh, I've sent these things to, uh, to Minmus before as well. Uh, you can do a ton of landings there. Sometimes I'll do a smaller single person capsule, but I'll use one of these wider uh, short tanks. That gives you a little bit wider, uh, uh, a little wider base when your landing gear is down. And that way, if you do happen to land on the side of a hill, it's less of a problem for you. Uh, you know, the lander's not as tippy, and it's a little bit more forgiving of that. The lander that I took to Minmus, it was a little tall and skinny, so if you land on a hillside, there's a good chance you're going to fall over and damage your craft, and you probably won't get back off the surface. This one, being sort of short and fat, is what some people refer to as pancake landers. And I've seen some people go much wider than this. There's no air resistance to worry about uh, once you get to these other bodies. So, you know, wider is more stable and uh, makes it a little bit easier. And while the surface of the moon may look relatively flat, those craters are absolutely gigantic. And with gravity pulling you down, you really don't have time to be hovering and trying to, uh, to translate to the side and get yourself to the bottom of the crater where it, uh, where it is a little bit flatter. So that gives you some extra options, and uh, you know, a trip down to the surface and back uh, will 
uh, use maybe all of the ten all of the fuel that you have in this tank, but you've got plenty of fuel in the main ship to uh, to constantly keep refueling. And there's uh, monopropellant, uh, there's thrusters on this thing to be able to uh, to dock it uh, easily. So that's kind of a next step that I'll often do with my uh, careers. And then once you've collected all the uh, the science you can from uh, the moon and Minmus, then you start looking at whether you want to go to Eve, whether you want to go to Duna, what your next step is from there. Anyways, that was just a couple of suggestions for you, a short little video this time. Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you found it informative.